the power of ideation. Everything comes from an idea, doesn't it? The power of ideation, of course, demands that we recognize that we're one with a divine intelligence and a power that is ours to use at any second, any moment. But it demands that we have to come to know God and know that prayer is not a mysterious exercise, nor God a mystery. We believe and know there's a constant relationship between the universal intelligence and our individual activities. We're breathing, we're living, we're eating, and we have work to do. We have found certain talents that we enjoy, but we have to recognize first there is a relationship between spirit and a spirit business profession. Their security, their finances, their health, and why? Because the divine mind, being the sole and only creative energy in the universe, finds in each individual a new and fresh beginning point, a starting point for its action in every moment we live. Now, spirit responds to us according to the word we speak, the thought we think. It responds quickly. And it's a refreshing moment. Now, the action can be bad action. Still, a new refreshing moment for you to use, for bad or for good. Now, if you cling to a negative thought, you are asking for a new and fresh action that must be negative. If you cling to a right idea, a God idea, a harmonious idea, there again is a fresh and new action. But here it's affirmative and harmonious, and it blesses you and others. Now, surely we would all like to live negation. Live in a world where there is justice, where there's happiness, where there's freedom. It was Alfred Griswold who wrote, books won't stay banned. They won't burn. Ideas won't go to jail. In the long run of history, the censor and the inquisitor have always lost. The only sure weapon against bad ideas is better ideas. So let's have better ideas, shall we? We ask ourselves, well, how can we achieve a better idea because the idea of myself is not so hot at this moment? Well, first, you know how we write a letter? Now, I'm sure the idea of the person to whom you are writing takes place in your mind. You see them. You almost feel their attitude toward you whether they really like you, love you, or whether they will help you, or whether this letter is being written for a physician. If you have an idea in your mind, and you visualize it, and you see it, sometimes we'll write a letter for a physician, we know it's not going to be accepted, and so it isn't accepted. But sometimes we bless the letter, and we know that this letter has a real divine action in it, because I can really... Apply for this position in confidence that I can help this company. Well, but you think about what you're going to write, don't you? It takes a great deal of work. You'll pause, you'll think, you'll scratch this out, you'll tear the paper up, you'll start again. The letter was finally written, and you signed it. Now let us say you have a problem. In meditation, it's like writing a letter to the presence of the divine intelligence within you are using ideas in your meditation. You use ideas in prayer. In other words, you're easier writing a letter about how difficult the situation is. All born from your experience, your intellect, and your ideas in the past. Now, you can write that type of letter. On the other hand, you can write a letter to the present. There's something within you that guides you, directs you, and heals, declaring. I now turn to that infinite mind within, the presence within. I know divine wisdom knows what to do under every circumstance and experience. It knows what to do about my problem and is doing it now. Right now, I boldly and daringly separate myself from the negative to the answer that is known in the infinite mind. Since I'm one with God, I release my mind from worry, fear, and anxiety, and stress. And I believe this because I know it's true. Well, 
Ernest Holmes said, write such a letter. Make it affirmative, positive. Read it and read it and read it until you believe it. When you really believe it, sign your name, put it in an envelope, and put it under your pillow and sleep on it. Know that something's working during the night. Feel it. Take it with you during the day. When you retire, put it under your pillow again. So it happens. Now you're affirming something, and it's with you. In other words, it's really praying without ceasing, isn't it? Now, we can do this when we know. We actually know that there is nothing to obstruct the passage of a new idea, except a litter of old ideas and old experiences. We seek an, a new, original, right idea in our life, and we seek that because we want more in life, every one of us. And sometimes we want it oh so badly because our present life is governed by many difficulties. Now, an original means exactly what the word signifies. Something unique, something different, nothing counterfeit. This is an original idea. Now, the man failing in business calls for a new idea that will bring success. I know it. I ask for it. I accept it. The student who is concerned about the future, what direction to take, calls for the right decision. I was speaking today, it was so interesting, with uh, a doctor about his son. And uh, he's wanted his son to be a lawyer. So badly, I don't know why. But uh, the son just wasn't interested. And he couldn't find anything to be really interested in. And so his father said, I'm not going to pay your tuition or help you unless you have a goal. I don't see any point of your going to Stanford, incidentally, unless you have a goal. He was accepted at Stanford. Well, can you imagine the surprise last night he came to his father and he said, I have a goal. I'm going to be a psychiatrist. His father said, why? He said, I think you and mother need one. <laughs> Principle demands, though, that we do have goals, we have to have purposes. People just sit and sit and sit. And you have to have something happen within you to get you up out of that rocking chair. To get you going, 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 and you become alive. Principle demands that we become mentally alert to detect whatever idea needs to be erased from our mind, and then to become actively, joyfully engaged in contacting its exact opposite. I think I told the story a number of years ago. Uh, a college student made an appointment, and I'd seen him about two years before. And he came in and opened up his coat, and here he had private detective. I said, are you a... By the detective now, he says, no. He says, everything is just going fine. I just do that because I'm a detective on myself. I'm a private eye looking into my ideas. He says, you can't imagine how wrong I am most of the time. And so he says, since I've been spying upon my ideas, arrested them, something happened. And then he told me of so many things that have happened in his life remind me of that scripture. The blessings have come down, so many of them that we just can't accept them all. Now, it's interesting that a young fellow like that would do that. So many people have failed in this business of living, and so many young people today are disturbed. Disturbed by the stress and the fear of world conditions. Some of them give up before they start. But there is not one person in this world who would not be benefited if they would simply believe in a power greater than themselves and declare believing. No thought of failure can operate in my mind. Now, this was one of the favorite phrases of Dr. Ernest Holmes. He said today, no thought of failure can operate in my mind. Now, are you willing to be a detective? You can say, I open my mind to the inflow of new ideas, new thoughts, new opportunities. And it's happening. 
But you have to remain constant to this idea. You have to affirm I am sure of this new activity because I know the law of mind reacts with absolute certainty on the thought I believe in. Therefore, I'm examining my true belief. Now, a meditation of prayer at spiritual mind treatment is built upon the concept of the limitless, not only of God's nature, but of the infinite intelligence which is available, coupled with the reality that the ever-increasing flow of good is anyone to accept if they will believe. I can't tell you of the hundreds, I guess thousands of cases, where somebody finally said, I believe, and the, the miracle took place if you would use that word, it was the law in action. But to them and to the family, it was a miracle. They just simply made up their mind and said, I believe it. It is not necessary for us to know the specific details of the actions that take place or the process. Our intellect is too limited to know that good is in store for us. But we can accept that good. Now, if I cut myself, I know it's going to heal. Because there's a healing power that automatically takes care of it. I have faith. I know this. By the same token, there's the intelligence, a love, if we would believe it, that takes care of our problems just as easily when we need help. Now, there's a perfection within all of us right now. But there's also imperfection, isn't it? The imperfection that holds so many thoughts. Well, the ages have built up a sense of discord, conflict, disease, fear, which have been transmitted from generation to generation. And it is lodged in the general race belief. And from this source, through unconscious suggestion, passes into the life of the individual and more or less seems to hypnotize everyone from the cradle to the grave that life is difficult, that trouble is ahead. Well, we can still know the reality that sets us free. And in doing this, we are not departing from that which is reasonable. In fact, it's the one great reasonable reality in life, the power that you have within yourself to change your mind. Now, our reactions to life are largely drawn from the sum total of our human experience, plus the impact of the collective experience. Let's say I've had some disappointed experiences, so other people tell me of their experiences. So suddenly, my mind is filled with the negative experience of friends, others, including my own. And that is why there seems to be a conflict between the original creative urge, its desire for self-expression, and the repression action which so many of us experience. We repress love. We repress faith. We repress our belief. How could it happen to me? Well, that's the reason we cannot wait until the collective consciousness of the whole world is cleared up. We can't wait until peace reigns supreme in this world. We must take steps right now to make the needed changes in our own individual life. And then something happens. Now, if something is continually wrong in our lives, we must realize it is human experience repeating itself in the individual. Therefore, we declare that the negative human experience in our personal life is no longer the power. There's a power greater than that negative experience. Now, the psychologist knows, or the psychiatrist, that to help a person, he must separate the neuroses from the neurotic. And I ask this question, if any of you are present. How can this be done unless the doctor believes there is something in the person not subject to the neurosis? Has to believe in something more. And that is why we believe, if we are consumed by negative ideas, the activity of negative thought, we affirm they are temporary disturbances in the mind. And they remain attached to us as long as we permit them to be attached. Here's where we come to our program of detachment, and really the study of ideation. 
In the science of mind, mental negation and experience are identical. They are not two things. They're one. We believe that your affirmation and the demonstration are identical. They are one. That's what you believe in. That's what you say is true. And we know that by changing the idea of the thought, we change the experience. Now, what we are doing is separating the belief from the believer. In mental practice, our whole proposition is whether or not one is willing, really willing to see through the obstruction to the unobstructed wisdom within. Now, here comes this great mountain of difficulty. Now, it's not a difficulty in the mind of God. We experience it as a difficulty. All right? We must affirm there's a power that can remove that mountain of difficulty. That's why Jesus told us not to judge according to appearances. See through them. See through that mountain. Now, for an answer to our every problem, let us know we're going to work with ideas. I was walking with Ernest one morning, and Ernest said, uh, how we say, you don't have a penny for your thoughts? And I said, oh, I was just thinking, I, I have to speak. This morning, two hours and two hours tonight, and I have the broadcast to make and all, and many things. He says, my goodness, he said, that could be the greatest joy in your life. I said, what do you mean, joy? Uh, it takes work. That preparation takes work. He said, you know, the students aren't going to get anything from you today. He said, I'd better take your place. Well, that hurt me naturally. And I take my place and said, yes. He said, look, you're radiating just your own problems, your own difficulties. And that's ideation, the idea, the negative idea. I have so much to do, I can't do it. It's so hard to prepare, and they're not going to feel good about it. And you're not going to give them that something that works. Ernest was so right. Ernest was so right. Then he began telling a few stories, so we got laughing. And uh, I had no difficulty because instead of Bill speaking, I let the Spirit speak to me to the classes. And the broadcast went well, everything was happening. Why? Because of ideation. I radiated an idea that was good. Well, I had to ask myself what was the idea of myself in order to change it. I knew. And this was my starting point. And I ask you to do that tonight. What is the idea about yourself? And you want to enter into a new period of ideation, a God idea that radiates from you. Faith must radiate from you. Love must radiate from you. But you must radiate, the real you. Be what you are and love it. Be the real you. We all are trying to act like somebody else when it's the real you that counts. Now, that's your starting point. Find the real you. Secondly, what is the idea you have about responding to the creative urges within yourself to be more, to have more, to give more? Now, these are three essentials in life. We want to be more, every one of us. We want to have more. And we want to give more. Because in the giving, we receive. We've learned that in childhood. Before one ever prays, gives a treatment. Self-analyzation is necessary before spiritual self-contemplation can take place and hear the ideation rays that go forth. I want a better idea of myself. I'm unhappy at this present time, and I really don't know what it is. I've had so many experiences, but this is a fresh starting point. And through an idea... Ideation. I'm going to just be myself. I'm going to be Bill Hornaday, and this day I'm going to act like Bill Hornaday. I'm going to be happy with Bill Hornaday. And something goes out just like the sun goes out to keep it. I prayed. I have the letter with me. I have it under my pillow. I know, because... The ideation, even while I slept, went up. The ideation of truth and the reality. 
that I was created as someone. I was created for important things, too. And I was created to be happy and have supply. All right? Now, let us say you're ready to go, all of us tonight. We're ready to write our letter, have an affirmation. And that's not ridiculous. I know that a great many people might think that is. We're not superstitious. We have no fear. We're trying to get our mind to be in tune with truth constantly. We're trying to get our mind in tune with an affirmation. Where I am, God is. Again, let us say we're ready to go. You're ready to be a detective in your mind. Casting out all the gremlins, the resentments, the guilt. You can then affirm this treatment, which has helped me. I, through a power greater than I am, release all thought of fear from my mind. Now, then I have to think about that. How many of you read the meditations of a magazine or perhaps other meditations? You just read them through without analyzation, without thinking. Now, there's a power, I don't care whether it's in athletics, in business, in rejuvenating your body, giving you a useful service. It's yours to use. Now, I to a power greater than I am, release all thought of fear from my mind. Have I done it? Am I a good detective? Well, I have a little worry about this, worry about that. All right, out, out, out. In other words, you have to be able to say, I right now lay all trouble aside. I look through it. I look beyond it. I look above it. I'm one with God. But we need guidance and we need insight. So we have to do something else. It's one thing to just say, all right, God is where I am. God is directing me. You have the responsibility to permit something to happen to you. Why do we permit a negative experience to enter our minds and we keep entertaining it, entertaining it, entertaining it, entertaining it. I don't know. We have to change our mind and we have to say, I allow divine wisdom to flow through me in ever widening fields of activity. And I say, do I mean it? I allow. Wonderful things can happen to you. But you have to allow it to happen. I allow divine wisdom, not my just little intellect. I allow divine wisdom to flow through me into ever-widening fields of activity. Now, you can also do something else. You can say, every joy I've ever had is now multiplied ten times, a hundred times. Every good that I've ever experienced, I now multiply. Whatever my supply has been, I now multiply. You can do it. In other words, life loves you, but do you love life? You can declare, I love life, and, and life loves me. And new original ideas, ideas that respond to an ideation that's powerful, powerful, are given to you freely. And you feel this action. And when you say, all right, I feel better, I feel an action within me. You just feel an action. I can't define it. I can't explain it. You feel good. You just feel better. You've given a meditation. You've prayed. You've written your letters under your pillow. You're sleeping. You feel better. You know something's in action. And you're happier. Now, this experience, now, I, I assure you, causes you to be grateful for every passing moment. When was the last time you gave thanks for the last hour? The moments pass. The moments pass. When you listen to the dial of prayer, and it just seems, oh, so long, and then so short. One minute. And how long, five minutes is for you to become absolutely quiet and still. This is a part of the separation to still the mind. When you can say, be gone, when you can laugh at those fears and those doubts, as Ernest told me, it is just through mirth, through looking at the sunny side of life. Most of us don't do it. The sunny side of life isn't there. You know you can do it. 
There are no limits to my possibilities in this thing called life, Dr. Ernest Holmes said. To my possibilities. Now, what were his possibilities? He loved people. He loved teaching. And his possibilities were to think and achieve original ideas. He was a scholar. Second, he wanted to share those ideas with others because they would work. And when they didn't work, he studied further. And I have some of his original work clear back to 1924 and 23 when he was a young man. In fact, in 1918, I have a manuscript of Dr. Anastone. And to observe the growth, the tremendous growth, that had to have virtue to it, or we wouldn't be here. And he worked with people. He saw this wonderful, wonderful possibility. And his one big, big point was, all right, how can I cause this person to believe it? He used every method that he could think of until finally he came to a spiritual mind feast. And in that spiritual mind feast was to recognize the wonders of you as God. This wonderful body of yours, God's body. To recognize all of the beauties that you can see. Why, to think, with his rose, he said it was an idea in the mind of God. An ideation is created. Look at all the roses there are and the different colors of them. A tree, yes, was needed. And the ideation, well, oh, look how many types of trees there are. And birds that sing for us and fly, yes. First, they were an idea, an original idea in the mind of God for us to enjoy. And suddenly the ideation spread and looked at all the varieties we have. Until finally, God created earth a balance to ideate. The idea even pronounced every single one of us good. But it was to be balanced. Balanced, yes. Not only with food, but with beauty. Not only with people, but a balance within all people. A balance of body, mind, and spirit. A balance of love. A balance of well-being. A balance within the body. All have been provided. And all have been given to us in our system. Why do we deny it? Why do we deny it? I believe this. We can participate in the principle of ideation. The ideation comes from a mental activity within yourself. Now, if I ask you right now to think of the ocean, you see the ocean. It's so simple, as Ernest said, to see yourself as perfect. Perfect God, perfect man, perfect being. Feel yourself. In him we move and have our being. In other words, see it. See yourself as different. And you see yourself different by mind, don't you? You're thinking. All right, I see myself stronger. I see myself well supplied. I see myself healthier. I see myself loved. All right, if you can see that, that's an idea. Perhaps it's an original idea to many of you. Because why? You will declare has been rather unkind, though. No. This is a new, fresh, beginning moment. And something within you just awaits your new word, your new affirmation, where there's no negation. You say, yes, but common sense tells me that I have this situation or this problem. Well, you can call it common sense. That's something telling you. Turn to a new moment and get rid of it. Get rid of it. And we can do it. We've experienced this here. I've experienced it. I'm sure you've had the moment of experiencing it. Sometimes we fail to realize it was God in action. We called it luck. Or we call it coincidence. No, luck does not exist. Coincidence does not exist. All is planned in an orderly fashion. 
and we need to put our cells in order to let's do it. Let's close our eyes for just a moment. We have to ask ourselves first, what is the idea of myself, of my happy, and my secure? Do I have the power to believe the changes that are taking place in my life, the changes that are needed, the changes that will bring harmony and happiness, not only to myself, but to others, and to God's world, and let us give thanks, and so it is. Amen.